Iowa Catholic Radio now presents the Sunday Mass from the historic Basilica of St. John in Des Moines, Iowa. Aquinas M. Nichols, pastor of the Basilica. The intention of this Mass is for the parish and its benefactors. The Mass will be found in the hymnal supplement on page 27, Mass of New Life. The readings will be found in the Sing a New Songbook, page 180. 
Our opening antiphon is found in the St. Michael's hymnal. Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you died and rose that we might live. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the bread of life. Come down from heaven. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that they had any of his possessions was his, was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The Word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, he may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Our second collection today will be for the repairs of the exterior of the Basilica. The final approvement is in the mail coming from the bishop, so within this month we will begin the work. In today's readings, the reading from the Acts of the Apostles highlights two rela related aspects of the early Christian community. First, we are told that the community was of one heart and of one mind, living precisely as a community, holding everything in common rather than as a collection of individuals. The last sentence returns to this idea, emphasizing that everyone contributed to the common fund so that no one among them went without. Between these two notices is the comment that the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Rather than disrupt the theme of the common life, this statement holds it together, suggesting that the impetus for this new social structure was the new life which was founded in Jesus Christ. This itself called for a new way of living among those who would call themselves disciples. In the first letter of St. John, our second reading for today, St. John explores the mutual relationships between Christ and God, between Christ and believers, and between believers and God, all of which inform each other in a complex abiding, one of St. John's favorite words. Just before this reading, he has stated that whoever loves God must love his brother. When we love God, we can love those whom God has begotten, because when we are begotten by God, 
we receive or are strengthened by our faith. Through faith in Christ, one is both begotten by God and enters a circle of love in which we love God and through that love, love our neighbor. And in loving our neighbor, we thus fulfill God's commandments, which is what it means to truly love God. The Holy Gospel account this morning recounts that eight days after his resurrection, Jesus returns to his disciples who have hidden themselves away from the world out of fear. During his passion, death, and even now his resurrection, the most dominant trait of most of Jesus' closest associates has been that of fear. Yet now, in his moment of victory, Jesus speaks not a word of reproachment or condemnation. Instead, he twice speaks a word of peace and then shows that he still has faith in them. This faith is grounded in the power of the Holy Spirit. The essence of the mission will be to proclaim forgiveness and the apostles now have the power to forgive sins given to them directly by Jesus as he inaugurates the sacrament of reconciliation. Pope St. John Paul the Great wished to emphasize this forgiveness given to us by establishing this Divine Mercy Sunday. When we turn to the Lord, we are forgiven of our sins, provided we have a firm purpose of amendment, and we receive the grace that we need to lead righteous and moral lives. So much of the world rejects Christ and the love that he has for humanity. But those who know the Lord Jesus and understand his mission turn to him with the attitude of repentance and sorrow. In turn, Jesus says to us, be not afraid. These words spoken by Pope St. John Paul the Great so often during his papacy should remind us not to have fear, but to have trust in the Lord and all that the Lord has done for us. As we continue in our Easter joy in these coming weeks, let us rejoice in the forgiveness of our sins and the fact that God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten Son for the salvation of the world. With one voice today we cry out, Have mercy on us, O Lord, and on all of the world. Now let us stand as we renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, we renew our baptismal promises by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works? and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And may God, almighty Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Now basking in our Easter joy, we present our needs to our Heavenly Father as we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the Vicar of Jesus Christ on earth, for our Bishop William, that strengthened with the courage of the apostles, they may proclaim Christ crucified and risen from the dead. We pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the nations of the world, that they will strive for peace and justice and the defense of all human life, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to the sacred priesthood, the diaconate and religious life, especially for our diocese and from the young of our parish, for the perseverance of our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick who have been entrusted to our prayers, particularly all those on the Basilica prayer list, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, especially the members of our families, our relatives, friends, benefactors, oblates, and deceased parish members, that the risen Christ may give them all eternal peace and joy, we pray to the Lord. O Heavenly Father, in the resurrection of your only begotten Son from the dead, a new hope of life is given to us. Help us remain faithful to his teaching and to his church, and thus follow him to the heavenly kingdom. We ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Our offertory hymn is found in the St. Michael's hymnal on page 791. There's a wideness in God's mercy, 791.
May my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, 
We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water in the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your, in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. listening to the Sunday Mass from the Basilica of St. John in Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.